Good morning, everybody. It's uh, again a little bit later, but this week, you know, school starts, so everything is a little bit um, shifted for me. So I guess I'm gonna post this an hour later in the morning than usual. Um, also, I hope you saw my Bulgaria home shirt video. I hope you liked that one. Uh, as I said, it's one of the shirts that I used to wear a lot, but now it's getting a little bit too beat up. So there you go. Also, <laughs> I'm not sure if you would like my shirt that I'm wearing here. Oh, lots of traffic here. Uh, we're gonna make it. Um, of course, it's the Green Bay Packers from the NFL, who yesterday had, well, yesterday European time, was Sunday evening in America, uh, had one of those comeback victories. I'm not gonna lose too much time, but it's just funny. It was against their eternal rival, the Chicago Bears, oldest rivalry in the NFL. And somehow, at least since I'm watching, and that's basically the, since 97, 96, 97, somewhere there. Um, Chicago always manages to lose against Green Bay. It's not always that Green Bay wins it, it's sometimes Chicago loses it. And I think if you have a 20 point lead, yes, you have uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers on Green Bay side, which is, the, uh, in my opinion, the best freaking quarterback out there, although I wish he would have a little bit more support. Um, but he was wobbling around the field and you managed to blow a 20 point lead. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah. It is almost as epic. Now it's not that epic any, any, anymore, but when I started to become a soccer fan, it was all Milan, 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 Milan. And uh, Inter was a non factor. I think for the, my first 15 years, it was almost comical. Inter is splurring out all this money, spending, 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 and in the end, they end up short. And almost also to comically proportions. Uh, I mean, most notably, they got Ronaldo, the big Ronaldo, and you know, had a big team together and never could manage. I think when they lost the championship on the last day, uh, playing to Ais Roma, against Lazio, Lazio, and I think it was Juventus who got this. I, I never forget that one. I mean, this was really comical, especially since the Lazio fans didn't want Juve to win the championship. Um, they were actually cheering against their own team. And <laughs> it happened all the wrong reasons. Well, since then Inter has won unfortunately too many championships but you know I digress what are we here to talk about is of course uh, Nations League yesterday I barely watched the thing I saw the 25 minutes last 25 minutes of uh, Portugal of the first half of Portugal versus Italy I was just too beat up from yesterday and I'm not sure how it will go today if I watch something I'm not sure if I will watch uh, Croatia's um, is it Croatia, England? I think it's Croatia, England or Croatia, Spain, one of those two. I think Croatia, Spain, if you ask me, but you know. That's how out of it I am right now. But I probably want to watch Austria against Bosnia for obvious reasons. I think there's also an interesting duel. I think it's Hungary against Greece. That sounds intriguing, but you know, you. that's the one thing. With the 8.45, time you have too many uh, games parallel and you know I tend to go for the bigger ones because uh, it's sometimes a little bit hard for me to motivate myself to watch even Austria game if there's a, a big name game uh, on the other channel but I think today it's if I had the choice I probably would go for uh, the Austria game but yeah if it was France versus Netherlands uh, up with up to Austria, I think I would go France Netherlands. I don't know. It's just yeah, I'm a Netherlands fan and France. Is like, that sounds better, you know. Uh, don't wanna discount any of the teams playing in League A, but just the way I mean, I think Belgium is playing Iceland. Also, not exactly the. That would not beat Austria versus Bosnia for me, but you know. So what I watched yesterday was just a little bit of Portugal against Italy 
and it was right around, yeah, you could see that the game was an uh, open game. <coughs> Excuse me. It was kind of an open game, but Portugal really taking advantage of the holes in Italy's uh, lineup. Especially, there was a huge gaping hole between the defense and the midfield. I always had the feeling that uh, Portugal always could play it right in between there. And they, in a way, they played wonderfully, they just didn't take the chances. I think this is how, uh, how I saw it. I mean, there was a period where Portugal had three huge chances around the 30th, 30, 35th minute. First, there was a um, kind of um, off clearance by Donnarumma, who on the other side was the only Italian. And I think from what I heard and when I saw the game lived up to expectations, the rest was kind of a little bit, yeah, like a, a herd of chicken in a way. A little bit runny, running around without too much um, the structure to it, uh, or just being outplayed in a way. Um, yeah, sad to say. Um, but Portugal played nicely forward, they just didn't have a finisher, although they had Andre Silva on front. The first chance, I think, was cleared off the line. From this clearance, then uh, a cross in, uh, I think, got deflected by Italian, the a defender against the bar, where I think everyone thought that was going in already. And then I think Man uh, Rui Manuel shot a wide. Um, a thundering, it was a thundering shot. So yeah, could have been two by that time. I think an Italy got a little bit back, but not really, really, really threatening. Andre Silva, now we get to him, back to him, uh, then got the early goal for Portugal and that's how it ended. Uh, I think Italy didn't have a serious chance in the entire game. And yeah, Andre Silva is one of those, he played last season for Milan and I actually was hoping that they keep him. He's still a young talent and especially if you play in Serie A, it takes a while to get accustomed to everything. And I really thought that he has the talent to actually have a breakthrough season at Milan. They didn't keep him, I actually feel a little bit sorry for that. That is a player that I would have kept, I would have only given him away on loan. And you know, at Sevilla he already scored three in his first game. Now he scored the winner. There, this is an up, up and coming young player. But unfortunately, I'm, I'm afraid this is a talent that Milan kind of wasted away a little bit. Uh, of course, I'm not the coach, but I never had the feeling that Andre Silva is weaker than, say, Kalinic. Never thought that way. Kalinic, of course, had a little bit more experience in Serie A. As for, I think, Portugal without Ronaldo, what was missing was that they had, they didn't have the striker in front that makes the goals. That was basically the one thing missing for Italy. Everything else looked really, ah, for Portugal, everything else looked really well. Um, and maybe if they play a little bit more direct, they have a chance of being a really good team. And they are really a really good team. But uh, maybe we, they should win this group. As for what I saw, I think they have a good uh, chance of winning this group by making it to the final four. As for Italy, I hope it's just part of the rebuilding project. That, you know, Mancini needs to get his handwriting onto his team and they need to understand what Mancini is doing. This is my hope. I mean, of course, he has been, it was a completely different lineup now. I think he has to try a little bit and maybe for that the Nations League. It's coming a little bit too early and I'm actually afraid that Italy will end third in this group and gets to League B, but maybe it's also not the worst thing for them. I think they have to find themselves. That's uh, my hope at least. I don't think the generation lacks talent. I really don't. I just think that they have to find uh, their rhythm. Now, of course, the jersey matchup I actually liked a lot. Uh, as, as I said, the Italy away jersey, if the white color would go all the way around, it would look great. Other, uh, the way it looks now, it's a little bit odd. But yeah, I think I like the uh, red against the white and blue. I think this, this looks really nice and I think the Italy jersey, not being all white but with, with the blue pants, looked really, really great. I love that color combination and I think it made for a great visual matchup. I even think that uh, Italy could have played in blue. 
but you know, I think uh, looked all right the way they did. Uh, other games, there was Sweden against Turkey, where uh, Sweden got a, out to a two nothing lead at that moment. From what I get, a very well deserved. I mean, Turkey got a little bit into the game late on, but the first half was completely dominated by Sweden. I think Thelin made the first goal. And then Klesson, uh, absolute thundering stroke into the net, made it 2 nothing, and it seems like Sweden is cruising. And then Turkey did what Turkey often does, coming back into the game. Uh, especially at the Euro 2008, Jalanoglu, Milan playmaker, quickly equalized. And then <laughs> it looked like a win for Sweden, and in the 80, I think 87th and the 93rd, uh, Akbaba, I think was his name, scored twice for Turkey to give Turkey a win. Uh, well, it's a young Turkey team, so it's great that this is kind of an open group in League B, uh, together with Russia. I mean, Russia completely outclassed um, Turkey at uh, away from <laughs> away. And now Turkey has another away win, so it will be interesting what Sweden against Russia will do. Um, but yeah. Uh, it was for me. It seemed never. I always thought that Sweden will win this relatively easy. Although it was also, I think it was the second most intriguing matchup for me. Although the third game that I'm talking about, and I have not seen much more, it was then uh, Serbia against Romania. This was a close to for me personally, if I had to choose. Serbia Romania was very close to um, Sweden against Turkey. Um, that game was, again, I only saw the um, highlights, but from what I could gather, uh, Serbia dominated the first half and got uh, early goal. I've got the goal by Mitrovic, not early goal, uh, which actually uh, was scored sitting. And Romania got itself back into the game, equalized. Uh, then Mitrovic, that goal was also a great one, where he just pulled the ball up and then wallaced it in. Great goal by Mitrovic, uh, and everything seems done and dusted but uh, Romania got back into the game and made it 2-2 so yeah um, I think Serbia now has four points and Romania has um, um, two points but you know an away draw against Serbia that's a big result that group is actually quite uh, tricky I mean Serbia and Romania those are decent decent mid-level national teams in Europe. Uh, I mean, Serbia, I would, after the World Cup, I'm showing him, put a uh, higher mid-level, and Romania probably also. I mean, they will, I would expect both of them to be featured at Euro um, 20, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, mean, I think that the only game, I didn't see a thing, but I saw the result was Scotland beat Albania 2-0. I wanted to see that one. Uh, let's go back to Jersey, especially for the jerseys. I wanted to see Scotland again, uh, play against Albania. Uh, I haven't seen when Albania play with red. I would expect they would play in white jerseys. But I, will, I uh, always like the Scotland jerseys. I don't have one. But yeah, that, I always thought that of all the British teams, Scotland will be the first one that I'll get. I really thought that, uh, especially the 96 version. That's, that, that's a beautiful shirt. Uh, but yeah, no. I don't have a Scotland, I got an England jersey, um, <laughs> go figure, no, but England, I actually, at the moment, I really, really, really uh, enjoy what they're doing, um, it's refreshing, to say the least, uh, and that's why, but yeah, also, I think a Wales shirt in an Ireland jersey is, is right around the corner somewhere, sometime soonish. But yeah, Jersey, Jersey matchups. The Sweden Turkey, yeah, was uh, as expected. Sweden playing in their home colors. Um, as you know, I'm not a big fan of the current kit. I think that the yellow is too bright, uh, in my opinion. And Turkey in red with a little black axis. I think it's a, a little bit of a weird color combination, to be honest with you. Uh, but nothing uh, fundamentally wrong with it. I think Turkey actually looks okay with the all red kit. It just has the black color. I actually would prefer it with white a little bit more. And Serbia, Romania was red against yellow egg as well. Um, I don't know in that case the the Serbia kit looks cheap. I said this before. Uh, yes, this was a last minute deal. They struck with Puma but 
so much more cool could have been done with that one. And the Romania kit, I really like the idea with the off-center stripe with the Romanian flag. I just wish somehow that, you know, uh, if you play then in all yellow, um, there's maybe a little bit of color splash missing. I think if that was uh, with blue pants and maybe uh, blue pants or some red socks or something like, like that, I think blue would, would look maybe a little bit better. But yeah, I understand Bulg uh, Bulgaria, Romania plays in all yellow. Uh, for that, I think the home jersey and the shorts should have a little bit more color because the Romanian colors are actually quite interesting. I mean, the you have um, red, yellow and blue. I think you should do more within this color scheme. I think the jerseys themselves, if you just look the shirt, I think they look pretty cool. Also the new coat of arms on there. I really love it. They also had this uh, Tango soccer style ball in a swirl that, yeah, it's maybe the classic look. But the new one, absolute. That looks a little bit more like a uh, true coat of arms. I actually have to try, try to identify what it actually means. But uh, at first look, it looks really cool. Well, still a few minutes to go, but I think I'll end it here. Let me know what you thought about anything that I said. Uh, from the Packers jersey to all the games, Italy, Portugal, which games you want to watch, how, how you choose your games, if there are so many parallel games. And yeah, what you thought about Portugal and Italy, uh, Sweden against Turkey, Serbia, Romania. Maybe you can give me a little bit uh, or Scotland, but I hope I will be able to watch some highlights of that today. Maybe I'll watch of the lower level teams. And tomorrow I'll give you hopefully a little roundup of the final games. It was on six days in a row of Nations League play. It gets a little bit exhausting, especially since the games are a little bit late for me, I think. But yeah, I'm trying to watch more. And uh, probably on Friday I'll give you a general feel of what I thought about the Nations Leagues uh, at the first try. And then we're gonna go back into club season. The Champions League is looming. And I am preparing something. I probably for the rest of the week I will still have some um, national team jerseys going. Probably, but yeah, we'll get into Champions League and talk a little bit more about it. And your Europa League as well. Uh, this weekend already looks like I'm not gonna be able to watch a lot of games. But yeah. Family matters, we're gonna do some visits, we're gonna do some travel. So yeah, after two, three weekends where I had soccer wall to wall, maybe. I, it's a good thing to do something else. Well, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.